I'm currently sitting in my 10 year old 991.1 Porsche GT3 and I'm gonna try to make this car the most powerful GT3 in the country. As my Ferrari 812 is broken and it has to go back to Ferrari, I bought a Porsche GT3 for 92,000 pounds that I'm now going to modify to make it the most powerful GT3 in the country. <laughs> In this video we're going to make a start on the upgrades and then take it to Matt Armstrong to get his opinion and see if my GT3 is better than his. <laughs> That's insane! Oh Mr. Tannen! <laughs> <laughs> the car and myself are getting used to each other. I just drove it for about 250 miles. I absolutely enjoy how it drives, but this car can 100% sound better. I'm currently in Newcastle. I'm going to bring in the car. It's going to go on a dyno and we're going to do some tests. We're going to see how much power this car is performing from stock. The car is supposed to have 475 horsepower, but the car is 10 years old, so it may have lost a few horsepowers. The guys in Newcastle are apparently really good at remapping cars and I want to take this car to the next level. Do that again because that sounded brilliant. Yeah. When I was doing the ref for the intro, I forgot to open the valves. Sorry about that. Sounds better, you know. Sounds better than earlier. The guys are prepping the car for the dyno, but the real question is, will this car even survive the dyno? As on the way, we have encountered some problems. About half an hour in the, in the drive, I faced uh, nearly a Christmas tree again. There was a notification about the oil levels, which is really, really weird because I got the notification when we ended up in the harbor in Northern Ireland. Like, all your oil levels are relatively low. Oil level minimum reached, refill oil. Are we leaking oil all of a sudden? I hope not. I hope we're not leaking oil. The moment we arrived in Newcastle, the oil levels were dangerously low. It's like, oh, you need to stop. You can't drive, whatever. Just arrived at the petrol station here. I just got two errors. Let me see if they're still here. Oil below minimum refill. Fault display coolant temperature possible to drive. There must be a reason why that happened. I mean, I just bought this from Porsche. Don't get me wrong, it's a 10 year old car, but I just bought this from Porsche. So this should be 100%. I'm very curious. I'm looking forward to this. So this is a dyno, right? You're gonna test the performance of the car, basically. Correct. This sort of simulates real world conditions, driving on the road, it measures horsepower and torque output. It's not really built, built for top speed. It's a mechanical machine, so it's got a speed limit. What is the yeah. speed limit on that? About 180, something like that. Miles or kilometers? Miles. Miles, all right, all right. Is there a difference because the engine is actually in the rear here? Normally engines are in the front, right? Front or middle, yeah. Not in terms of power it measures. It's still output through the wheels. So that's ah. where we're measuring it. Now you're measuring things out like performance. I've had some problems when I drove down to Newcastle. Have you seen anything lighten up? Yeah, so before we tune or dyno any car, we always do the like, diagnostic scan. And on your particular car, 26 different systems scanned. At least 50% of them are red, which means they've got fault code in them. <laughs> what? Yeah. Is it serious? Yeah. 26 things it has? 50% is That's classic you. That's classic, man. You like, I mean. You bought a mint. To me, it looks like it's probably like a spurious kind of random electrical fault. I don't know whether it's ever had a flat battery even in the time you've had it. No, so no, I've had it for two weeks. So. Yeah, so that's fairly common with cars when they get a flat battery, they can ping in a load of different fault codes when the voltage gets low. Warning, check minimum oil level. Which said that was today, on. that was yeah. mad. Can you do me a favor, right? Yeah. At some point, check that oil Absolutely. level. But what I've seen strapping it down, obviously, I lie down on the car and strap it. It looks bone dry. I can't see an oil leak. Uh, I can't see. No, I was checking. We were checking twice anything. as well. Yeah, yeah. I can't have another A12 GTS disaster. To no. be honest, right? <laughs> don't I can't deal with that. I will. I, I, I cannot mentally cope with that. To be honest, I've had my fair share of electrical faults with my A12, which broke down on the trip to Monaco, and it's still not fixed today. So I definitely don't want any electrical faults with the GT3. This car is standard seven, 475 horsepower. Yeah, I believe so. Claimed by Porsche. Yeah, claimed, so. yeah. But it's also 10 years old. Exactly. But no, it should make somewhere. Like our machine reads the power at the wheels, not the flywheel. So when a manufacturer says it's got 475 brake horsepower, they're talking about the flywheel of the engine. There's no way without taking that engine out of the car of actually measuring direct at the flywheel. So all hub dyno, or sorry, all chassis dynos like this measure at the wheels. So you'll have a transmission loss from there. Generally, we, we work off an average of 15% transmission loss. So 400 at the 475, sorry, at the flywheel. 
we would expect to see on our machine around about 400 and then by the time you had the 15 percent transmission loss on that's around about 475 again what is the highest number of horsepower you've seen on that dyno on this particular chassis dyno our, dy our dyno jet measured about 1800 so 1800 in a big big power gtr <laughs> it's like four of these <laughs> yeah. that's insane. Uh, absolute animal and that gets sketchy because you're putting everything through the tires you've got to trust and hope that them tires can like hold the torque you know, you get a lot of temperature, a lot of heat on here as well. Our number one goal with this car is to make this the most powerful GT3 in the country. But first, we need to know one thing. What is the most powerful GT3 you've ever seen? Couldn't even give you a power figure. I haven't really I seen want, any. That's I want to create it's not the most of... powerful GT3 yeah. in the country. Have this is a start. Have you got a figure in mind or not? Listen, I don't know what is rea reality. I've seen 700 horsepower. I have seen twin turboed. Would you do that with a GT3? That's the thing. It's a little bit sort of sacrilege, I guess. But I mean, at the same time, it's... Would you not go and buy a GT2? Or? Yeah, exactly. Now it's time to see what the car makes stock. A 10-year-old car. And we're going to run it in fourth gear and see what power it makes. But first, we need to do it test run to check if everything is good with the car. Listen to how good this sounds. I cannot wait to hear what it sounds full throttle. Unbelievable, mate. So, like I said before, this is measured in wheel horsepower, not yeah. in flywheel horsepower. So it made 411, 411 wheel horsepower, and 291 wheel foot pounds of torque. That is. Ah, Do you add 15% to that now? No. So put it 484. So almost 10 brake horsepower up. So this car is power. standard 484, yeah. 85 actually. 485, I'll round it up. Yeah. 485 horsepower. So 10 more than what Porsche claimed. So it didn't lose any it's, horsepower. It's not lost anything. The number one way to gain more power in a car is to change the exhaust system. So that's what we're going to do first. But this isn't just any exhaust. This is an IPE exhaust. Look how insane this looks. This is where the performance is. Obviously on a Porsche, the main ethic is is, is weight, performance, you know, stuff like that. With titanium, obviously you get a big saving over stock. So that's one big plus. And obviously noise, you get a slightly different frequency. Yeah, so it's it's a titanium. Resonance yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. Because there's no cats, right? Would it shoot flames? It might do, yeah. <laughs> might do. Yeah, there's a good chance it probably will. I like that. I like the sound <laughs> of that. So the guys started removing the old exhaust, ready to fit the new one. But now, now they're facing some new issues. One of the studs holding the manifold to this driver side bank, it's yeah. snapped. Access isn't ideal. The other issue you have, this is one side manifold, catalytic converter in. This is your lambda sensors. Yeah. These, I see, is solid in there. So one of the screws in the manifold has snapped and has gone into the engine. As well as that, the O2 sensors are seized up. Long story short, this is going to take some time to fix. We would never like let a car go out like that. They are a Bosch part. Yeah. So rang Bosch UK and I can get them here for Friday or Monday. All right. You know? Well, regardless, the car is not driving home, basically. Nah. No. Is this like a big problem? Is this common or what's it's the crack? Dead common. Yeah, dead common. Um, Is it just from like wear and tear over the years? Kind of wear years? and tear and corrosion, yeah. A week long wait for parts. Oh, that's a kick in the balls. <laughs> Guys, this is not how I planned this video to be. This was all because of your advice. We went German and this is what you get. Buy GT3, buy GT3, <laughs> buy German, buy German. Good idea, lad. After a full week of waiting, we headed back to Newcastle where the new parts had arrived and the snap screw had been retrieved from the engine. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace the old system with a brand spanking new light and very loud system. Later in the video, we're gonna compare the performances from before the modifications to after after the modifications. I need this GT3 to be the most powerful in the country, period. Here's a look at the new IPE exhaust system in comparison to the old stock system. Look at the size difference. 
It's insane. Why is is there is there so much difference in well, size? I think Porsche have made it as big as they can for, for probably for like noise emissions purposes. So they've filled all this space up behind the rear wheels yeah. with silencer. We want to take this car on track on Friday week and there's a noise limit of 105 decibels. It'll, it'll, it'll probably be louder. We do have a decibel meter, I think, in the office. I'll oh, go, do, can I'll, we test I'll go that? It's been a while can since we, we test that it. later on, yeah? Uh, yeah? At the track, they are gonna yeah. test how loud this car is. He specifically said on the phone, before you get on track, we need to test how loud the car is. And he is. said it a few times. And he <laughs> said it a few times. Yeah. So the boys got to work and started fitting the new exhaust. Part one is in, part two is in. Yep, next step is part three, which is the main back box section. So that is basically this, Replacing but that, then yeah. smaller. Yeah. That looks actually really good. Matt Armstrong does this stuff. I just look at people doing this stuff. And just like that, part three was complete. I am so curious how this car is gonna sound. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's gonna be insane. The new exhaust system is fully attached to the car. We're gonna put the final touches on the GT3 and then we're gonna see what Matt Armstrong thinks of this car. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> Leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it like that. Right, let me hear this. I'm really, really can't wait. Before we compare the performance of the car before and after the new exhaust on the dyno, we need to check the decibel level to see if this car is allowed on track. We're now gonna measure how loud the exhaust actually is. We're good! We're good! We're good! It's just there. There's a ref limiter on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we're good to bring the car on track, and I was yeah. actually worried about this stuff, so. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. Now, moment of truth. Have we increased the performance of this car? I know it's gonna have a few more horsepower or whatever. It's, it's not that much. To really make this the most powerful uh, GT3 in the country, we need to twin turbo it. We need to do all sorts of mad stuff with yeah. it. So that's what we're gonna do. But not now. Now, we just need to get the computer to give us some extra horses. Right, let's get the GT3 on the dyno and see if our new exhaust has increased its overall performance. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is scary, by the way. <laughs> There's no cats, right? Would it shoot flames? It might do, yeah. <laughs> Holy f that's insane. Now tell me what we have here. So before was how I measured at the wheels, so yeah. 411 wheel horsepower. We've now got, it was getting stronger and stronger as it's yeah. sort of adapting a little bit. It's also getting a bit of exhaust temperature up and freer flowing. 437 yeah. at the wheels and torque's gone from 291 foot pounds at the wheels to 307. So to give you like a real world figure, like a brake horsepower, 484, 485 stock power. Now the good news is with the exhaust and the tune on, we're now making 515 at the flywheel. 550. So you're over 500 brake horsepower. That is insane. But I still want 250 extra. Like, I mean, I want the most powerful GT3 in the <laughs> country. Right, we're gonna head down to Matt Armstrong. We had some spare time before we're gonna see Matt Armstrong. So I decided to see Chris Slicks and get his opinion on the GT3. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Do you reckon neighbors will like it? I don't think so. <laughs> Open the valves. Now you're talking to me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I've never heard her from the outside. I mean, driving. Holy f that sounds unreal. <laughs> it's a good looking and a good sounding car. It's lively as well. I didn't oh. think it'd be so lively. I like it. This is insane. Yeah, I don't think it needs turbos. 
you've seen Matt's GT3? Yes. 10 2 what do you think is better? This is loads better. Yeah. On a scale of one to better, this is better. <laughs> yeah? Is it? <laughs> is he taking a piss? Then this one. I don't think I've been in it. No? I can't even say, but this one's better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This one is better, so f you. You know what's really surreal for me with this car? It's so light. A Porsche isn't light. No, never. And that's what I love. Right, let's see what Matt thinks of the car. And of course, I want to know if this GT3 is better than his. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you by the way. Listen, I saw you rebuilding two GT3s now, right? Yeah. And it made me think I want a GT3. But as I cannot build anything, I just bought one. <laughs> Classic. And then I'm going to compete Classic. against you. You see what it, it's really fair. You see what <laughs> I think you've got better than a GT3, though, haven't you? So oh, I, no, you are. I bought, oh. I brought a GT3, right? But I saw you racing the GT3 against the Lamborghini, right? Yeah. And it kind of broke my heart when I saw that you didn't even win that. <laughs> I, I was like, it was wet, it was cold, you know, like, I reckon, I in the dry, different story. Mate, honestly, you're a great guy. You can build stuff, but driving is not one of them. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Do you know what? With this, I don't, I did not expect you to drive one of these. You, I I love it, mate. <laughs> I love every bit of this. It's what about ridiculous. the Ferrari? The story's not finished yet, but I saw you with a 992 GT3 and I thought, you know what? What will be a cool journey? Instead of going 992, I'm going 991.1, maybe the, dot two. These are the 992. These are good though. These are sick. Yeah. Oh, they don't come with bucket seats in these ones. No, it's comfort spec. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but you're see, racing, you're going to heat a bomb. You see what I mean? The, these seats, I had these seats in my Cayman S and they were really comfy. And the road trip that we're going to do is you'll probably be glad you got these oh, from the book. We're going to do a road trip, another one, yeah. where stuff is not going wrong for sure. <laughs> he, he doesn't know where we're going or what we're doing. <laughs> well, he knows where we're going, but you don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> that is going to be <laughs> I'm not telling you. This is wicked. This right. is the right car. You've actually picked the right car for once. And if this goes For wrong, once! For <laughs> once! <laughs> he says for once as well! The Ferrari was absolutely wicked it's the ferrari. reliability yeah, it's ferrari. It's a ferrari, it? is it's this approved not. right this is yeah 10 out of 10. Come i on. can't rev the car here but i want you to hear this because this is outrageous cool, let, let's hear it but when i get told off everyone hates me <laughs> around here because of the noise can i do it once yeah go a quick one a quick one. right stand here <laughs> Do you know when I said it wasn't going to break down? <laughs> That's yeah. why it's going to break down. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> and then turns it off. That is not that. I was only allowed to do it once. <laughs> so I was like, ah. Oh. That is insane. Yeah, that sounds wicked. Honestly, uh, that was that was than what I remember. <laughs> That's louder than you remembered. Yeah. Yeah. I did not expect that. Hey, driving that, you should drive it. And oh, it's, I'd love to drive like, it. Have it in for, oh mate, this is mega. mega. I want oh, you to not. drive it and tell me the difference. What, between mine and this? Yeah. Can, we, can I go out in yeah. it then? Oh, let's do it. Is this on? Oh, it's recording. I don't know how this camera works, but it's recording. Oh, oh it's a beast. Look at that. Just press that. Yeah. Oh, you've got no uh, thing. That's different. Yeah, there's, there's just one mode. It's sports mode. PDK Sport. Let's get the seat. I'm going to adjust all your seat in position. That's comfort. Uh, I don't worry. That, it's because the comfort spec, it has memory as well. So let's have ESC off. Oh, mate, you're f <laughs> You're going to kill me. I f love this oh, car. It and it slides everywhere, mate. It's 100% oh, rear it? wheel. Oh, it slides no. everywhere. Well, we've just turned traction off, so. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea. What, what happens if I crash it? I don't know. <laughs> There's only one way to find out, is there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy f holy f that was insane! This is sick! Holy, there's a corner, lad! F***ing hell! Holy s***! <laughs> this, sounds, this sounds better than mine! This is insane! It's got a lot more of a deep sound, this is oh, sick! Mate, it is f***ing ridiculous! <laughs> How good is that sound? <laughs> Porsches are the best car. Are they? They are the best right. car. Good, because I need, I need, I need to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> this is mad. This is the best thing. The PDK. Oh. oh. <laughs> Holy f Do you think I can get this car up to 700 horsepower? So up to 700? Yeah. Well, if you're going to add like a turbo or a supercharger or something, is that what you're going to do? I think I really want to do that, but I don't want to build. I can't do nothing. <laughs> I'm just like... The problem is, the faster you're going to 
make it, the more yeah. unreliable it's going to come. All right. And this is going to be a reliable car. And I know you stress <laughs> about that Ferrari. <laughs> but, like this exhaust is like probably one of the best mods and then just leave it. <laughs> just leave it, right. If the bar says it, then it has to be done like that. Holy <laughs> 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 How good is this? Oh, it's like a race car. What do you think? What do you think? It's 10 out of 10. Mate, it's 10 out let of me 10. tell you one thing, right? This car, what do you think it costs? Over 100. It's got to be. I literally have no idea what it's going to cost. Are they 140? If I tell you that, the, everything there, including modifications, everything there will cost below 100k. Below 100? Below 100k. Why? Has it been crashed? No. No? Why is uh, this actually? Bought it, bought it from Porsche Center, right? No discount, nothing. Paid full price for the exhaust. Only 15,000 miles Only as well. Only 15,000 miles. This hey, is sick. That is value for money. Yeah. 100%. You've got a race car for under 100 grand. Yeah. This is unreal. And you can drive it on the road and it is an absolute belter. I love it. I have had more fun with this car. That's insane. Oh, Mr. Turnip. <laughs> From <laughs> I was having too much fun. How good is this car? The fun you have with that. <laughs> You've gone up in my books now because you bought one of these. <laughs> Woo! That's how you drive! <laughs> right. And fair play to your driving skills. I made fun of it earlier, but that was proper driving there. That it's was good fun. That was proper driving. What do you think? Approved? Yeah, it looks good, sounds good, drives good. Yeah. It's we good. need to get this on track against your car, you know that? Yeah, yeah, I think we do. And now we're gonna. Do. Figure out which one is better. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that one. <laughs> <laughs>